Number three, I already gave it away. We're looking for stacks, stack tubes. All these tubes are cells, so these cells are touching. All the tubes are cells. There's only three, so this is going to go really quick. We'll get the microscope pretty quickly here. Skeletal muscle are huge tubes, and the reason why is these normal cells fuse to form these huge tubes we call skeletal muscle. Okay? And when they fuse, the individual nuclei get shoved off to the side. So in a tube, there'll be dozens of nuclei, hundreds even. All the nuclei are just shoved off to the side. That's what's a peripheral nuclei. And this camera cuts off the left edge, but that's peripheral nuclei. It also has really obvious uh, stripes that are perpendicular to the long axis of the tubes. They call striations. That's how you spell it. Uh, cardiac muscle has subtle striations, and that's why it's not emboldened. The real obvious ones is skeletal muscle. But when you see the nuclei shoved off to the side, you know it's skeletal muscle. Smooth muscle are unfused cells, and same thing with cardiac muscle. <clears throat> but they're spindle-shaped cells. And so what we will see in the smooth muscle that I, yes? Sorry. Uh, the scared, the smooth muscle and the scared, the skeletal muscle are where are those? Skeletal muscle is like those muscle models up there. That guy there, skeletal muscle. It's the only one that we can contract voluntarily. There's some skeletal muscle that is involuntary, so it's both. Skeletal muscle is both, but these are all involuntary, 100%. Okay, any questions? All right, so um, not all smooth muscle looks like this, but the smooth muscle I'll ask you will look like this. Parallel lines except all of these are cells. So if you look at those parallel lines, there's a whole bunch more nuclei. You want to see dense, regular connective tissue again? Very few nuclei, separated by stuff. These nuclei are way smaller too. Everybody see that? These little black little lines. Those are the nuclei of fibroblasts. They're separated by stuff. You rarely see them touching. <clears throat> but in smooth muscle, they're touching. Everybody see that, the difference? Cardiac muscle, uh, you're going to see uh, what are called intercalated discs. In fact, over here we have a, a tray of cardiac muscle. I wouldn't look at any of it except for intercalated discs. Why? If I ask you cardiac muscle on the lab quiz, it is going to have intercalated discs visible. Let me explain what intercalated discs are. You guys are recording again? It is where one single cardiac muscle cell ends and another one begins. And it will look like a dark hash mark that is perpendicular long axis. Since uh, cardiac muscle cells are also infused, the nuclei is in the middle of each cell. That's these black ovals. But these guys here.
Maybe uh, there's a way for you guys to take pictures of what's on the whiteboard too. Okay. Okay, so here, it, you might not see every one, but the better pictures have more of them. Poor pictures don't have any of them, but you can actually see some intercalated discs. That's a, that's a real good one right there. Here, here. They're, they are actually there between every one, just some are bit more visible than others. Any question on muscle cells? There's only three. And up there at the top row of the table is the answer for the full point. Skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, cardiac muscle. Any questions? Stack tubes, only three choices. I have a question. Okay. So right now you're saying that the smooth mus muscle looks similar to the fibroblast? To the dense regular connective tissue. It just has a lot more nuclei. Yeah, that's the slide that you showed before, correct? Yes. That was dense regular connective tissue with very few nuclei. But they're both smooth muscle. They're, no, they're both parallel lines. See parallel lines here? Yeah, I see it. But a lot more nuclei. That's smooth muscle. You see parallel lines with a lot fewer nuclei? That's dense regular connective tissue. The only thing in common is the parallel lines. That's the words of this. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nervous tissue. There are no tissues. The first two listed at the bottom of page five are cells. The question will be what is the name of the cell? And I'm going to only use multipolar neurons. And those will be large, star-shaped cells. The name of the cell is neural. The smaller cells around it are cells that help neurons function better. You'll just call those neural glia. But the question that will come out of my mouth is what is the name of the cell? Because tissue type number four has no tissues. Tissue type one, two, and three, the question will be, what is the name of the tissue? Got it? Shall I repeat that? If the question out of my mouth is, what is the name of the tissue? You're thinking one, two, and three. One, free surface and basement membrane. Two, cells are not touching except for adipose. Three, stack tubes. But the question will be, what is the name of the tissue? If I'm in tissue type number four, is what is the name of the cell? For the first two. And for the last two is what is the name of the structure? And the structure is from a cross-section of a spinal cord. So if you're looking at those slides in the microscope, keep it in low power. In fact, for a lot of these cross-sections of spinal cord, these that are neonatal or Heal. You just have to hold it up and look at it with your naked eye. And you can actually see that. What you will see is you will see what looks like to be a gray butterfly. And the reason why I call it a gray butterfly is that reminds you that's gray matter. See how it's darker? And then the stuff around it is lighter. That will remind you that's white matter. But the question out of my mouth is what is the name of the structure? That's easy, ain't it? Are you starting to formulate the 20 questions in your head? So what's the name of the structure? It will be gray matter or white matter? Uh-huh. What is the name of the cell? Will be neuron or neuroglia. Is the lecture exam uh, multiple choice? Yeah, and matching, and essay.
Oh, wonderful. And I give you the answers to the essays, if you have ears to hear it. Any other questions on the lab quiz? That's the four tissue types, yeah. With like the neuron and neurogilia, do you have to put tissue after it or just the? Just the word neuron, neuroglia. Just the word gray matter or white matter. Because there are no tissues in oh, tissue yeah. type number four. Yeah. 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 Any other questions? This is one form. In the last website you don't need because I stole it. I don't even know if it's still good. And it's right here. This is a form biologists use of 20 questions. It's called a dichotomous key, which means every <coughs> question has only got two answers, yes or no. Everybody got it? So let's start where it says start here, shall we? That first question, which of the four tissue types is it separating out? Uh, the connective tissue because the connective tissue is the only one where the answer is no it is yes for the other three so let's go to the left side of this big old thing and it's connective tissue everybody see that second question it's trying to separate out blood where you're going to see a bunch of pink to purple circles without nuclei then it's separating out bone and cartilage. That's the only one with a cooney. If you see that cut tree trunk, that's bone. If you don't see the cut tree trunk, but you still see the cooney, it's cartilage. Hey, look at the last questions. It's about fibers. <coughs> I already did that 20 questions, making fun of my youngest son, right? This is showing you the 20 questions for the rest of it. Over there on the other side where the cells are close together, next question. It's picking out epithelial tissue. It's only one with the free surface. Then it's talking about cell layers and the shapes of the cells at the free surface. This is how you can get to the answer quickly without guessing. So it doesn't have a free surface, then it's either going to be muscle tissue, stack tubes, that's another way, tube like, or nervous tissue. Okay? Now here I want to show you one thing before we break out the uh, microscopes. The computers in the library in the Open Access Computer Lab has this anatomy review icon. Um, we used to sell the CDs of this, but uh, it is so old. This is a macromedia um, software that uh, Apple products can't even run, it's so old. But if you look for this anatomy review icon and click on it on the library computers or the computer lab right next to it, you'll get this, it'll open up just like that. And the first two pages, are page five, histology, and page six, integumentary system. The first two is gonna be on the lab quiz. Some of the versions of my lab quiz will have a picture or two from this, but it's not like gonna give you what the quiz is. Everybody got it? Look at this first one though. What you see on the left is what I wrote on the right. Look how it looks like a thin walled bubble. It looks like a thin walled bubble, yeah, except look how thin walled adipose is. That's a thin walled bubble. That's thin walled bubbles. This is the one connective tissue where the cells do touch, but look how thin those walls are. That's what I drew over there on the left with that tiny little purple line showing you the thickness of that bubble versus this over here on the left. There. Everybody got it? Okay. What I want you to do is 
You can leave the PowerPoint out. You can leave your laboratory objectives out and something to write with. But everything else would be really good to put as a plank below the desk. And the reason why is once we have slides out, if you have too much clutter on your desk, it's easy to knock off a slide. And if a slide hits this hard floor, it breaks. So please put any extra stuff underneath on the plank below. And we have enough microscopes where everyone can grab one. They're in those two cabinets behind there. I'm pointing at them right now. You grab one. You carry it with both hands, one under the base, one on the arm. Bring it to your lab seat. Make sure the electrical cord is plugged in tight on the back of the microscope. Plug the other end into the power bar on the back of the table. You don't want this clutter on the desk. You want to put this on the plank underneath the desk as well. Turn it on so that the light is all the way on. And then just uh, stop once the light is on. Don't do anything else after that. But just when it clears out, you will get one. Is it one per person? No, one per person. And uh, yeah, we only have about 35, 40 minutes of this today. And that's not very much time to get good practice at it. Next week, the, my presentation is only like an hour. And then you'll have a lot more time to play with microscopes next time. Okay? Okay, again, uh, be sure you put the plastic covers on the plank below. It's a plastic thing that knocks slides off. Make sure the light is all the way on. You have two sets of lenses. You have the ones you look in the microscope called the oculars. Then you have objective lenses that rotate on a little round table. You want to rotate the objective lenses so that the short 4x lens is pointing straight down toward the light. And you can see, you can just turn it, rotates, and it snaps in place. Be sure your light is all the way on. Turn it all the way up. And I know it's really bright at low power, but once we start going into high power, it gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. Then what you want to do is you want to take the large focus knobs and drop the stage where you put the slides as far down as you can. Short red X lens straight down the stage as low as you can. You're gonna to have to prop yourself to see them. There we go. Okay, everybody there? 
Short Forex lens down, stage dropped all the way. This is what I want you to do right now, uh, and we do this for people who don't know how to do microscopes. Eventually, you won't have to go through all these steps. Eventually. But what I'm trying to avoid is scratching the objective lenses. That's what's expensive to fix. And let's face it, your second grader gets their school more money for the school than you guys get us. We can't afford to fix these. Everybody got it? All right, so I have three sets of, three trays of slides for epithelial. I have six for connective, three for muscle, and I think I have three for nervous. Each tray has a label on it. And what should be above it should be matching what's on the label. When we are done with my, some microscopes and you're gonna put it back, do me a favor and read the freaking label and put it in the same freaking label that's on the tray. Okay? Because I hate having to put them in the right place. I will. And other teachers don't have students do that. And I have to come here and straighten it all out so that you guys are not confused. Okay? Put the right slides back in the right tray. Epithelial, connective, muscle, nervous. Again, if uh, you're going to get um, cardiac muscle, intercalated disc slides only. Or you're just wasting your time. If you're going to look at the spinal cord, you can look at your naked eye, you can see the gray butterfly. Or if you can put it in 4X, that's as high as you should go with the spinal cord. Otherwise, it's going to disappear eventually. Everybody got it? Anybody grab like three or four slides? Do not put it in the microscope yet. And we're going to do this for. Uh, about a half hour. Again, you'll get more time next week. And then uh, we'll clean things up and spend a few minutes playing some 20 questions. How does that sound? Sounds good. Or if you don't think that's good, I cannot do 20 questions and save my voice. didn't get any response to that. Did you guys tired of hearing my voice? No. You had a full week this week of hearing my voice. Okay. Now, if your stage has dropped as far as it can, and I think everybody here got uh, the same microscope. There are a handful of other ones. On the right side of the stage, toward the back, are your stage clips. You pinch it to open it, you release it to close it. Play with it for a little bit. That's the sound I want to hear. What you do is you open it, you put the slide up on the left side so that it's square in the angle, then you release it, and there you go. It's in. And the reason why I want the light all the way up is then I want you to use the stage clip controls, which is below the stage on the right side. You move it up and down or left or right, and move it so you can see the tissue and the light. Because there's one thing that will delay you finding tissue is if you're not even in where the cells are. Okay, 
Your goal for today and next week when we're with the microscopes is these slides were taken from actual living things eventually, you know, they came from living things. There are multiple tissues on the slides. Your first goal is to find the tissue that is on the label because there are other tissues on there. If you need help, raise your hand and I'll come help you find it. Once you've found the tissue that is on the label, see if you can find the distinguishing features I talked about running my mouth off in lab here. That's what you want to do. And what you want to do is this. Once you have the cells in the light, without looking through the oculars, everybody look at me, without looking through the oculars, I'm looking off the side, and I'm going to raise the stage up all the way to the top. If you have the short 4X lens in place, it's going to only get to about a half inch from the slide. You're not going to scratch the oculars. Everybody got it? Once the stage is all the way up, now look through the oculars and focus by dropping the stage. Once you get it close with the large knob, use the small knob for the fine focus. I start out by putting this all the way up, and then I focus it like that, and I get that. What's that? Yeah, you could stop recording now. 